Excuses. Isn't it easy just how us men can come up with excuses for literally anything and in particularly when it comes to that moment that you know that you should go and speak to that attractive lady. Now I want to in this video go over all of the different excuses that I have heard when it comes to approaching or cold approaching women. And these have been pretty much all of the typical excuses that I've heard when I've either worked with clients or I've worked with my clients, clients and so on. But it's been pretty much with guys on the streets of London and working with them and just hearing those moments where they're like, oh, I don't know if I could do this. And then them literally giving me the excuse as to why. Now I've got seven that I'm gonna go over in this video. And perhaps maybe there are more, but I mean, these are literally, I'd say the main ones that have typically come up. So I'm sure there'll be one or two at the very least here that you will resonate with and go, yep, I've said that too. 100% I'll, I'll put my hand up and admit it. Guilty as charged. Yep, I've said that too. Um, but besides me going over each of the different um, uh, excuses that men have had, um, I also want to play devil's advocate and actually challenge them as well and get you just to think about each of these different limiting beliefs in uh, a completely different way. And hopefully when you, go, uh, when you do go out and practice your cold approaching, or perhaps if you're going to work with a dating coach, then these are just some things that I want you to consider and ask yourself or uh, hell, better yet, challenge your, your beliefs with, and hopefully they'll help you take those extra steps further to getting the results that you want. So the first excuse I have heard a hell of a lot is I don't really want to disturb her. Now this one has happened most certainly I think more indoors than outdoors where like uh, I've maybe been in a coffee shop with a client or we've been in like a museum or a gallery or something and he's seen uh, a woman who's maybe sitting there and she's reading a book or she's writing notes or whatever uh, or maybe she's just sitting there on her phone even as well. And I've said to them, like, go and go and just give them a compliment. And they've gone like, no, 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 I, I don't want to disturb her. Like, I'm going to interfere with her day. Now, let me ask you, how do you know that you are interfering with her day? Now, not to quote from the movie Hitch, but... Um, you know, there are women out there that are just kind of like wishing that some guy would sweep them off their feet. And most people's dating lives are boring. And they kind of hope that just someone confident and decent and respectful is going to come along and show interest in them. And in the circumstances of someone just sitting on their phone or they're writing notes and stuff, just bear in mind, you're not looking to have like a like a, an hours and hours of long conversation. You could be pretty much like in and out talking to someone. And if you are worried about disturbing them, then call it out when you do your approach and use it as part of your opener. You know, make it clear about the elephant in the room. Excuse me, look, I can see that you're really busy um, and I didn't want to disturb you, but I just had to say. And then do your delivery, do your compliment or ask your question. And that can be just a really great way just to kind of break the ice of the circumstance and just show that you understand potentially what the situation is. And if she says, uh, like, oh, no, I'm not actually busy at all. I'm just waiting for my friend or like, oh, I'm just keeping busy before I head off to wherever, then that is your window of opportunity to have a conversation with someone. And of course, if she says like, yeah, I am actually busy, I'm, I'm just uh, writing some notes or I'm getting bits together ready before I have to head to work, then okay, then that just means that you need to be certainly more direct and more to the point in why you're talking to her. It could be very um, straight to the point in a sense of 
you could say, well, look, you're really attractive. Um, I, I would have regretted it if I didn't come over and say something. Um, and because you're busy, I don't want to disturb you, but I'd love to uh, just invite you out on a date sometime. And it, she'll say yes or no. If she says like, yeah, absolutely. Great. Go for the number and say, right, I'll leave you to it. And off you go. If she says that she's uh, in a relationship or she's not interested, you say, no worries. I'll leave you to it. Have a great day. End of. And that scenario could have then been no more than like a minute long if she was actually busy and you were disturbing her. But until you go over and say something, you honestly don't know. And you'll find with a lot of these uh, excuses, uh, it will be the exact same thing. That until you go over and say something, you just don't know what the situation is. So there's no point trying to future predict something that you have no understanding of and you could be 100% wrong of every single time. So the second excuse that I've had is I just don't know what to say. And of course, this is one that is probably the most common for a lot of guys that, you know, they'll start, they'll go over to someone, they'll they'll open and they have already kind of gone in with this strategy or this mentality of a strategy that they have to talk about X, Y, and Z topics if they're going to get a result. And that's not how conversations happen. Now, it's don't get me wrong, it's a good idea to have in mind a direction to steer the conversation, but the only direction you're steering it in is to go for a phone number. You're not taking it down like the route of some like political conversation or, um, you know, or like what their thoughts are of uh, of the banking situation in Ecuador. I don't know how I'll come up with that. But point being is that you're not having to really think about anything that's too specific and too crazy. All you're doing is going over and striking a conversation. And if you are struggling with really with what to say, the best starting point to consider is uh, through observation. When you're walking over to her, think about what is it specifically that you notice about her that you can ask her a question about? What are you most curious about with her? If perhaps it's maybe the way that she walks, ask her, like, are you a cat model? Or perhaps maybe if you want to play the more cultural card, you could say that uh, you love how Spanish she looks and you were curious if she was Spanish or perhaps maybe even with her fashion sense you could even say that I absolutely um, appreciate or love this style that you've got going on I was curious where you got your inspiration from or I was curious if you're a fashion expert or something there are lots of different ways to do it and I mean okay this is me just riffing on the spot but you know think about for yourself um, when you're walking around or when you're on your way to places and you do notice someone that you're attracted to, what specifically did you notice? And through that, what could you go over and ask them about it? And that's just a really good starting point. And then as for the rest of the conversation, the most important thing is actively listening. So as she's talking, she will hopefully share with you some really interesting and useful topics that you can start branching off into. And I, one of the things that I actually love doing and have encouraged other clients of mine to do as well is to set yourself this like, three justification rule for asking for a phone number and it's just a great way to encourage more actively listening in yourself where you need to set yourself the goal of discovering three really interesting things about the women you're speaking to before you then are allowed or allowing yourself to ask for that phone number so you can pick like thousands of different topics but you can ask a things about her for you to show interest in. So you could even ask the simple questions of like, what do you do job wise? What are you up to today? You know, what sort of like foods and things do you like? It doesn't really matter. I mean, as long as the conversation somewhat flows from that initial topic that you bring up, 
the rest of the conversation will be absolutely fine. Now, if you are going through this process via cold approaching, you're not looking for, again, a massively long conversation here. You're looking for like a couple of minutes, if that, maybe at most 10, 15 minutes, depending on the time that you have free. So you don't need to be going through a ridiculous amount of topics. You're only just there to establish that you're attracted to her and that you're not this strange guy who's just approached her and that you're someone who's showing interest in her and you want to get to know her better. And if uh, going on a date is certainly a way to do that, then hopefully she will oblige to that as well. So if you're struggling with um, this particular excuse of I don't know what to say, make the observation about her before you go over and approach. What could you ask her about with that observation and then just let the conversation flow like that and you'll find it will actually be a lot easier than you think. So excuse number three is that I don't think she's alone. I think she's with someone so sometimes, especially like if you're in coffee places or if people are out walking and it kind of looks like that there's like a bunch of people walking together, that perhaps maybe there is a group forming. Now, you don't really know just from that straightaway observation. You might have to give it, you know, a couple of seconds or even a minute or so to actually work out is that person alone or are they with other people? Now, if you find that then actually that person is on their own and you don't feel confident enough to approach if there was a group of people, then that would be your window of opportunity. And that would be a case certainly for the uh, the beginners of people who are doing cold approaching or practicing their social skills. Now, if you're certainly a lot more advanced, it might be then the option to go for the approach if there is a group of people there that you shouldn't let a group of maybe her friends or family there potentially stop you from going over to say something. Although with the family scenario, I mean, that is incredibly, I would count that as more high risky because you just also don't know how that situation can play out. Um, I think sometimes parents, I think more more particularly dads can be quite overprotective. It's not actually that bad if you're um, you're approaching someone who's with their mum because that's always that quite a nice romantic uh, situation if you're going over and you're complimenting the mum as well as the uh, the daughter as well then um, then certainly that's always kind of a nice one uh, at that but um, but if you are brave enough to do that then then go for it but it's absolutely fine to read the situation first and just get a clearer understanding of what's going on don't just make that decision straight away and go like oh no she's with a group I'm, I'm leaving that opportunity when you could find that by then going over and approaching her she could be very open to having and wanting a conversation with you and certainly even more so if you've stopped her if she's with her mum. So don't completely rule off the uh, the situation just because the moment looks too complicated for you. Take a breather, read the situation for what it is. Is it a, uh, is she surrounded by a lot of people? Is she uh, potentially sort of just on her own? and gauge it like that. No matter what, you're still going to go over and be very respectful to go and speak to her. So it's just a matter of reading the situation. And again, call out the elephant in the room if you're uncertain about stuff. You can say if she's with her family or if she's with her friends, that I, I get that you're with your friends and this is incredibly cheeky of me, but I had to say hi. Or excuse me, look, I know you're, you're with your uh, absolutely lovely mother, but I just wanted to say you both looked absolutely fantastic today. Even something like that, you will get brownie points, not just from the girl that you're speaking to or the lady that you're speaking to, but even from the friends and from the family as well. So the next excuse that I've had is that uh, I've had guys say, I don't think I'm her type. This whole like, she's out of my league sort of thing. Now, it's very easy to be intimidated 
got the hiccups again um it's very easy to be intimidated by women who are just incredibly attractive the kind of women that you've maybe never had or experienced in your social life or social circle and so you will consider them out of your league but how do you know that you're out of her league or that you're not in her league this is something else as well it's very much a limiting belief this one in that you are the one who is knocking yourself down as opposed to lifting yourself up i have known over the years um, especially through clients so many good looking attractive tall guys who are incredibly anxious and shy and so they don't get the best results with women. They are so intimidated by attractive women, even though they're good looking themselves. And yet I've also known them to be very jealous of much shorter, unattractive, uh, le um, well, not less sociable men, but more sociable men who have the confidence and conviction in themselves to go over and speak to women. So imagine then you've got shorter, not so attractive guys who are getting fantastic results with beautiful women as opposed to really attractive guys that are getting very little to no results with women. And it's a very bizarre reality, I think, for guys to grasp because of just every bit of content maybe that they've seen through dating podcasts online on YouTube. But in real life, people aren't so much too picky with how looks are. They care really more about the confidence and personality that someone brings to the table um, in any sort of romantic situation. So you could be the most charismatic guy and not be that attractive and you will get fantastic results with women. There will be women that will be attracted to you because of just how you've been able to emotionally stimulate their brains. So just consider that, that it's not always about looks, especially for men, that if you can be really confident, if you can have conviction with what you want, if you can be uh, flirtatious and have charisma, then you will be attractive to a lot of women. So just bear that in mind that it's not always about looks. And perhaps you might find that the tables turn and actually you're out of her league and she feels nervous about being with someone who's as interesting as you. Okay, so this is the next excuse that I've had. And this one has come up a hell of a lot that they've seen, a guy has seen uh, an attractive woman speedily walk by and their excuse is that oh no she's in a rush I'm not going to be able to stop her uh, or like she's not going to stop for me because she's just she's clearly like a woman on a mission somewhere now again yes the situation does read that she's in a rush but that doesn't mean that if you go to stop her in the most appropriate kind of way that she isn't going to stop for you and of course you have to also read the situation and think like, okay, as she's in a rush, I have to do my delivery quick. I can't just be looking to have a full on conversation with her. If I were to stop her, I've got to get straight to the point and not mess around because otherwise all that that is gonna do is most likely piss her off and she's not going to be interested in going on a date with me because I'm like clearly acting as a time waster rather than reading the uh, the situation or calling out the elephant in the room and, uh, and accepting like, okay, look, when I stop her, I've gotta be like, look, excuse me, I know that you're in a rush, but I just wanted to say really quickly and then making your delivery. And then even with the conversation, just, you know, have a slight back and forth chat. You can even very cheekily ask and say, where are you in a rush to? Um, where's the uh, where's the fire? What's going on? And, you know, maybe she says that she's in a rush to work or she's going to a gym class or session. So she does have to run. As soon as you can get a clearer understanding of the situation, then if anything, that gives you that kind of direct justifiable reason to get straight to the point and say well look as you're heading off I've just got to say look I think you're really attractive I'd love to take you out on a date sometime can I take your number 
and she'll say yes or no. And if she says no, say, okay, no worries. I wish you all the best. Have a great session or good luck with whatever at work. That's it. Always leave people in a high. That That's my, um, uh, what's, what's the, the word I'm looking for? Uh, I mean, that's my way of doing things. Um, I think it's just always great to leave people on a high because you never know if there is that opportunity that another guy has the confidence to go and say something to her. She might be more open to wanting to have a conversation, especially if she's not so much in a rush. So with this one, don't let the excuse of someone who's walking by really quickly prevent you from going over and saying something. Instead, read the situation or look at the situation for what it is. You might have to move really quickly if you are interested in stopping her. And when you do stop her, get straight to the point, call out the situation, say that you recognize that she's in a rush, but you wanted to say hi. And even then you might have to get straight to the point and ask her for her phone number and say, like, I'd love to take you out on a date sometime and see what she says. With this one as well, you can't take it to heart because she's uh, thinking about certainly other things. She's not necessarily thinking about, oh, I'm going to be stopped on the street today or I'm going to be stopped and spoken to for a conversation. She is running on autopilot and she's just thinking about what the missions are or goals are for the things that she needs to do that day. So certainly as well, don't take it to heart. And same with any of these other limiting beliefs, whatever kind of reaction you get, don't ever take anything to heart, okay? Um, I know it's easier said than done, but this is why desensitization and exposure therapy is incredibly useful to getting good at talking to people. So this next one's a little bit of a switcheroo and where I've heard from guys instead, them saying that, oh, actually they're in a rush. Um, I'm not gonna have the time to, you know, go and stop her. Look, I've got to quickly get somewhere. This is just absolute rubbish. Don't let this excuse stop you because this is probably the easiest one out of all of the excuses to say with avoiding having a conversation with someone new. If you genuinely like someone, go over and say something. And if you're finding that time is an issue, get straight to the point when you're going over to speak to her. You can also call out the fact that you're in a rush. So when you stop her, say, Look, excuse me, I'm gonna be really cheeky here because I'm, I'm in a rush to go to work or go to the gym, but I just had to say, you are absolutely stunning. And I wanted to just ask you for your phone number and take you out on a date sometime. See what she says. Now, ideally, you want to at least be establishing some kind of rapport. I mean, you can't expect that um, if you stop someone and you are in a rush, that that will just materialize into a date and whatnot. Um, I'd say statistically, it's quite low. But if you can at least spare like two, three minutes, we're not talking about anything crazy here, two, three minutes, that is all you need. And if you are someone who may be doesn't leave enough time to get from A to B, and you are almost purposefully ruling out your opportunity to speak to people, and that does become a very solid excuse to not talk to people, then consider giving yourself extra time. Maybe leave the house 15 minutes early um, uh, or earlier to go to a location rather than cutting it so tight that you are having to be somewhere literally on the dot. Give yourself a bit of extra leeway because I tell you what, if you suddenly had 15 minutes spare, there's probably maybe anywhere around like, like two or three extra approaches you could potentially be doing rather than saying, no, I can't do it. I'm in a rush. I've got to get somewhere. Can't do it. Can't speak to that person, you know, and, and instead not allowing you to have the opportunity to, uh, to speak to people. So just consider that. Give yourself a bit of extra time and you'll find that suddenly this excuse is no longer available for you and all that's left is the situation to go, okay, right, I've now actually got some time to speak to this woman. Okay, yeah, right, I, I need to do it. And, and of course, if any other excuse comes up, then you've got them available in this video and you can then go like, okay, right, well now this thing is coming up, right? I need to call out the elephant in the room or I need to say this or I need to be quicker with my delivery or getting to the point. So there are ways 
out of every single one of these excuses. And the last excuse that I've had from guys is that they predict that she's not single. Now, until you go over and speak to someone, you honestly don't know. So there is no point guessing. It's literally a 50-50. She's either taken or she's not taken. It's as simple as that. But for you to guess that she's in a relationship is just absurd because then you could you what you should be doing is instead making the guess and saying like I bet she's single and that's kind of got this sort of like glass half full sort of feel to it rather than saying it's half empty and I think it's just a much more optimistic approach and try and see it as every woman that you are attracted to that you're curious about speaking to try and at least go in with the mindset that you're predicting that she is single. And if she's not, let her tell you that she's not. And obviously, if she's in a relationship, you can say to her that that you wish her all the best and that her boyfriend is a lucky guy or her partner is a lucky person. And leave it as that. And every woman that I think I've spoken to that that circumstance has happened where she has said that she's in a relationship or that she's not taken or that she is taken I should say I've wished her all the best I've said like well your partner's a really really lucky guy and um they've loved it it's brightened up their day and again it's about leaving people on a high rather than feeling like you have to take it to heart if um, if they are, haven't said yes to giving you their phone number, you're not a failure if someone says no to you. You're better someone be honest with you and say that they're taken uh, or that they're not interested in you rather than you going on some like whirlwind chase and trying to be with someone who just isn't compatible with you or just isn't the right type of person or wants to be with you at all. So I think it's really great just to go into an interaction with the mindset that you are hoping that this woman is single. And until then she says that she's not single, just keep it with that mindset. Don't future predict and just shoot yourself in the foot and say like, oh, no, I'm I'm not going to speak to her. Like she's she's definitely married or she's definitely got, got a boyfriend or something. You just don't know. And I say this because I once I once met a woman who uh, I it wasn't until I stopped her that I saw she had a ring on her finger and I heard uh, and I'd given her a compliment and we were having a conversation. And then until I noticed the, the ring, I said, I am so sorry. I didn't realize that you were married. Um, uh, I, I, your, your husband is a really lucky guy. And then what it turned out after that, she laughed and she said like, no, actually, um, she was divorced, uh, but she'd kept the ring and she'd found that by wearing the ring, it meant that a lot of the sleazy guys that were out there would just not talk to her, uh, because they just knew like, oh, well, because she had a ring on, oh, she must be, uh, must be married. Um, and, um, and obviously I got the phone number and stuff from that, but it was, it just showed even to me in that instance that you just don't know a situation until you go over and speak to someone sometimes. And it's absolutely fair for women to try and, um, potentially give guys a reason to not come and speak to them. But if you let that wholeheartedly prevent you from then speaking to any attractive women, you're just going to potentially be missing out on opportunities. And okay, there's probably part of a fault on her if she's actually also giving the hint to every kind of guy to not speak to her. But sometimes, yeah, you have to roll the dice and just see what happens. But as long as you're still doing stuff in a respectful way, that's the important thing here. Rather than, you know, uh, guys getting angry or offended if, you know, again, she says no. That is just absolutely absurd. So as long as you're going over respectfully... Until you're being told that actually they're taken or they're in a relationship or something, try and go in with the mindset that they are single. And you'll find through that conversation where you stand.
whether there is a potential to get a phone number or not or for something more to happen too. So those are pretty much all of the top excuses that I have heard. And again, in the comments below, I would love to hear if any of these resonate with you and have you done anything to try and overcome these limiting beliefs and excuses? Now, if you are struggling to overcome any of these, then I do think that my dating desensitization therapy or potentially my integral eye movement therapy could be really beneficial for you because it will certainly hold you accountable to take action and also challenge these limiting beliefs. Because again, I don't want you to be just shooting yourself in the fur and missing opportunities because you think you're incapable of having them. Until you take action, until you do them, until you become desensitized to them and learn through your uh, mistakes, through trial and error of practicing social skills, you just don't know where a conversation could lead. For all you know, the next woman that you speak to that you're attracted to could be your ideal partner. It could be someone you could see yourself having a relationship with, getting married and having children with. You really, really don't know. It is a roll of the dice when it comes to this industry. It's like a lottery when you speak to people on the street. You have good sessions, you have bad sessions, you have good conversations, you have bad conversations. You get phone numbers, you get rejections and so on. So check out my website, have a look at my services. If you can, comment below and most certainly I would love it if you can like and subscribe to my channel and to this video. The more viewers, the more subscribers, the more engagement that I get is going to help me to at least build this community and reach and help even more men with their anxiety issues. And I absolutely love hearing of stories where guys have been able to overcome their their fears and anxiety, and they've been able to have a date in life that they've always wanted. And in particular, I love it when I hear of guys who believe that they could never have a girlfriend or they'd never get married and have kids and the complete opposite has happened. They are happily married with children, you know, and hopefully one day someone names their child after me, <laughs> which which is the stretch, but, you know, fingers crossed, maybe that, that does happen. So, Thank you again for watching. I've been Dan, that dating anxiety guy. Like, subscribe, comment below and look forward to more videos from me.